your voice again in one minute and just cry out to God and say, Father, I have come for an encounter. Come to be transformed. One word from the Lord that is understood and received can change your destiny forever. Jesus, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Let our hearts be open to receive everything that you have. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Good evening everyone. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Greetings to all who are connected with us from around the world online. We honor you. We love you. Distance is no barrier in the spirit. Those outside, those inside, the Lord bless you. It's good to have everyone around again. For those coming for the first time, what a joy to have you in our midst. The Lord bless you and increase you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me just um, reiterate a few things before we get into the teaching of the night. It never tires me to keep reminding us, please pay attention. And there is a reason why I do this all the time. Because um, the impact of a person, please listen, and you know this is a school. So everything that is communicated can be applied in our lives, businesses, or whatever it is. It is very, listen, it is very important that whatever it is you find yourself doing, you make your assignment or you make, if it is in business, the products or the services very clear. Are we together? Um, in business, we call it branding. Branding is a system where you connect your products with the psychology of the consumers. So that every time they see your logo or whatever it is, wherever, are we together now? They, so whenever they have a need, they know where to find it. Now the same principle applies in ministry. As a man of God, as a pastor, it is important that there is clarity over your assignment and what the people should expect Every time they are within the proximity of your grace, certain things should happen to them. And the assignment is upon every visionary leader to let the people know. And you create that persuasion through repetition. So that everyone who, for instance, comes for koinonia, already registers in their hearts that certain possibilities should be my experience. Are we together? If I, please help me, Jimmy, with this water. Watch this. This is Nestle, right? This is water. Look up, please. And if I remove, if I peel up what is here, there's no way that I would know whether this originally came from them or not. Is that true? Someone can fetch water from a well and put it in this bottle and sell it. So, a system came up to standardize their product and they branded it by putting this. Are we together now? So, every time you want Nestle water, when you pick it, you search for certain things. If you don't find it there, then it's not Nestle water. Are we together? They pay people millions to advertise in such a manner that they help you to know what to check out in a product to know whether it is fake or real. Are we together? Now, the reason why many listen and learn, I share my heart with you because um, we are largely young people and God is helping us to rise. And one of the reasons why many people, many churches don't grow, many great people, great businesses never rise, is there is no clarity as to what their products are. People cannot come to, there is too much vagueness. That you are a man of God does not mean you can deliver everything. So, there must be clarity, excuse me, 
of the dimension of the grace of God that is communicated to you so that those who need that grace will know where to go to. Are we together? When Benihin comes to Nigeria or wherever he goes to, when you are going for a Benihin crusade, you don't expect a relationship. You don't expect some of the... You go there on wheelchairs, angry, expecting that pain to leave. You expect an impartation. Are we together? His consistency in the spirit has branded that dimension of the dealings of God in him. When you go to God's servant, Bishop Oyedepo, you expect certain things to happen to you. Are we together? So, it is my assignment, among other things, to keep reminding us of what we represent to the body. So that every time you come or invite people to come, they come with their heart fixed to expect certain dimensions of God. This is how you know whether you belong here. This is how you know whether you need what is there. If I'm thirsty, I don't need a chemist to buy drugs. Do I? Now, that does not mean a chemist is bad. But with respect to my hunger, a chemist is not necessary. Are we together? So that when you know what stage and what level you are spiritually, you know what materials to listen to. You don't just carry everything spiritual and say, because I'm listening. You don't grow that way. It has to be specific. Imagine a student who goes to every faculty, just travel around and receives lecture at will. He's always in every lecture, but there is no direction. Are we together? Today, he feels like being in the faculty of medicine. Next, tomorrow, he's in accounting. And then, again, he's in fine arts. You see him drawing, trying to construct a building. And that guy does it successfully for five years. Do you think he deserves a degree? No. He deserves congratulations for diligence. But not a degree. Because his pursuit is not specific. Are we together now? So, the first thing I want to remind us of is... What we really represent to the body. What, what God has gathered us here. This training that we keep investing ourselves and committing ourselves to week after week, year after year. To what end? You are like a product that God is working on. You should have an idea of what you should be like when he is done with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that it will motivate you. It will encourage you. Whether it is through the rain whether it is through the sun, you no longer with this understanding come to church as though you are doing maybe your colleague who invited you a favor or maybe because you are a worker. That understanding guides you and it supplies strength. Even when you are weak, you know that God is, I'm, I'm, I'm on a project. I will continue going. When a lady goes to make her hair in the salon, you know, she steps there and they show her different pictures. And she sees what she wants to look like and says, that's the style I want. Correct? And she never asks how long will it take for this style to produce. She just knows that. Do you have the money? Do you have the patience? Yes. She sits down and for hours she's frowning and sweating but determined. Are we together? You will meet her and ask her a question and say, ah, my sister, you are still here? I traveled to Sabo and I'm back. She says, I mean, that's, that's, that's the demand of the style correct that's the demand of what the style at the end of it by the time she's beautifully dressed as soon as she steps out a brother is seen her he's like ah you mean you are the one you see that is the end product the brother never says you mean you stayed this long he does not care how long all the brother is interested in is the end product the generations are not waiting for our training they are waiting for what we will be like Nobody will forgive you for not healing the sick and say, I'm still on training. No. Whenever you approach them, they think you have finished. That means you must be diligent. God is raising mighty men in this place. God is raising people of power in this place. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till we look just like him He won't stop No, he won't stop 
Till my life looks like him He won't stop, he won't stop Till I look just like him He won't stop, he won't stop For you may weep, but he won't stop Till you look just like him You may cry, but he won't stop Till you look just like him Please don't stop, please don't stop Till we look just like him Please don't stop, Lord don't stop Till my life looks like him Lift your voice in one minute and say Lord Never allow my tears stop you from going on with the training The truths that I may hear may challenge me but I refuse to stop. Lift your voice and pray. There is a generation that is depending on my diligence. He said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. That your profiting, your profiting, your profiting will appear unto all. Believe me, this word of God works. It may take time, but you will look like Him. It may take time, but when it's done with you, He brings beauty and glory out of your life. Your life becomes nothing short of an awesome wonder. You may not look like it now. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. Just give Him time. Be patient with God. It, everything of value takes time. Everything of value takes time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So there are certain things we must always expect here. Number one, encounters. Koinonia has been designed by God. Our ministry to the body is to create a platform for people to have dramatic encounters with God. An encounter is an experience that makes a person real. When you meet me, you can say you have had an encounter. Because in meeting me, you will have the opportunity to have a closer look. You will talk with me. You will be able to interact with me. You will be able to understand my ideology. This is what an encounter is. So through the, the ministrations, through the worship, through the testimonies, and everything that we do, we seek to stimulate an atmosphere that brings encounters in the lives of people. It is my personal opinion that you are not a Christian if you have not encountered God. It doesn't matter how long you have been to church. If you have not had a personal encounter. We used to say it before. Now preachers don't say it. They just say, do you know God? And we know that God means everything to people. God is a bottle of minerals somewhere. God is a shrine somewhere. An encounter. They call it a personal encounter encounter. You can have a corporate encounter, but everyone needs a personal encounter, an experience that makes Jesus real to you, an experience that makes the life of God real to you. There's no hope of turning back after an encounter. It's not about trying. It's impossible to want to opt to go back. An encounter. Very important. Hallelujah. Number two, the second thing that we represent to the body is a platform where an understanding of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom is received. It is important to know that God has committed unto us the message of the kingdom. The message of the kingdom is the understanding of the principles of the kingdom that seeks to reveal to the believer his responsibility, the part he has to play as far as experientially enthroning Lord is concerned, and then extending the influence of his reign. 
we have that assignment to be able to make men see to bring people to an understanding where they understand that um, if we are to command victory in life it will be on the strength of the mysteries the principles of the kingdom so this is a place of understanding that's why you never hear people tell you oh, stories stories here and there we are concerned about you having the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom that is the only basis for a victorious life emotions don't produce victory listen listen emotions don't produce victory there are so many emotional things happening in the body of Christ. People cry, they jump, and, and, and I'm not against all these things, except for the fact that if they do not have life-applicable, kingdom-founded principles, they are not going to produce results in the lives of people. And you know, the system of God is such that after a period of God investing in your life, He will expect fruits. He came and saw the fig tree and cursed it. Why? Because it could not produce. So if you claim to have been around the things of God at a point in your life, there should be evidences. Evidences. Something should start working. Everything cannot go bad. If everything is bad in your life, then something must be wrong. And you must seek to find out, not look for who to blame. You see that? Because that's what we do. We look for someone to blame. We look for demons to blame. And sometimes they are guilty. But not all the time. We look for parents to blame. We look for government to blame. In this place we cultivate the spirit of responsibility. That if anything will ever change in your life. It's up to God and you. Not God alone. Not you alone. So koinonia. Comes as the word that defines that experience. Partnership. It takes partnership between God and man for anything notable to happen. We're very responsible people. We believe that my destiny and your destiny is not just in the hands of God to decide. Uh -uh. We have a role to play and that our assignment as individuals and as a people is to make sure that we are hands on, on our own part of the partnership. Because the problem is usually from us, never from him. You've been faithful, Lord, through the ages past, always faithful. That is why your name is forever. That means if my life is not moving forward, listen, if my life is not moving forward, I will be stupid to blame God. Are we together? I must understand that God, His name is faithful. It's not an attribute He has. The Bible calls him in Revelations faithful and true. There is no shadow of turning in him. So if anything is wrong in my life, things are not working, I'm not reflecting the reality of the word of God. I must with all meekness take responsibility and say, look, there is something I do not know or there is something I have not understood. There is something I have not believed. The moment you assume the position of responsibility, you are ready for divine help. God will never come and stretch his hands towards the people who are not ready to take responsibility. Are we together? The third thing that God has anointed and assigned us to do is the ministry of signs and wonders. Listen, you must understand that the ministry of signs and wonders is way beyond the ministry of miracles. The ministry of miracles is largely limited to bodies and all of the signs and wonders um are supernatural occurrences that challenge the belief systems of men and cause them to see the sovereignty of god displayed in the midst of the people that's why you see certain things they are not necessarily miracles you understand someone can be shouting outside i can tell you two people are going to shout right now that's not a miracle that's a sign and a wonder are we together now yeah all of a sudden supernatural occurrences begin to happen all kinds of strange demonstrations of the spirit i can be saying god is giving you speed and then you see people start running physically why are they acting out those things it's a ministry of signs and wonders when you understand this when you bring someone for the first time and the person is are you sure this guy is not a herbalist you tell him no 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 no, no. this is part of the call there is an anointing for signs and wonders very few people on earth have it many people have the anointing for miracles but not signs and wonders. 
He says, I will show signs in the heavens and wonders, blood, fire, and smoke. These are three mysteries. I will show signs in the heaven. Prophet Joel told us that is part of what comes with the outpouring of the Spirit. So aside from healing miracles, aside from deliverances and all of that, signs and wonders. Meaning that when you come for koinonia, you expect the limitless dimensions of the Holy Spirit demonstrated without restraint. Without restraint. Anything can happen. I can be talking and all of a sudden someone is shouting. And If you do not know that is part of the package here, you may be afraid. But when you know, when you hear someone shouting, instead of looking and saying, I hope this guy is not lying, you just say, God is here and he's here for me too. You see that? Yeah. Very important. When you understand these things, there are other auxiliary assignments, of course, the blessings of the kingdom, financial prosperity, the wealth of the kingdom, and so on and so forth. Everything God has sent me to do, everything God has sent us as a ministry to do, we are unapologetic about it. Why am I saying this? That means if I claim to be sent by God, and if I claim to be teaching you, and you are participating in what I am saying, it means if you are not changing to become what I claim God has asked me to do, something about my call and election must be questionable. If I claim God has called me to heal the sick, and I pray for 100 people and not one person gets healed, I need to go back to God and say, Lord, something is wrong somewhere. Transformed lives are the, like the trophies. The Bible calls them the seals of apostleship. Right? So that you look at your life and say, my God, look at what God has done in my life. I came and I met Jesus. My life has changed. So he releases the anointing that is responsible to produce that result. That's why many of us are gathered. That's why the testimonies are here. And tonight will be no different in the name of Jesus. You will always learn something when you come to the presence of God. I'm, I'm, the goal here is not to make you aware. You must understand that beyond the words you are hearing, there is an anointing that backs it up. That anointing is what empowers you to perform. Otherwise, all I'm giving you is a lecture. It's an intelligent lecture. Because some of the things that I'm communicating, some of them are products of researches. The research does not have an anointing in itself. It just has information. But when... That research is taken in the place of prayer. Something comes upon it. It's no longer a lecture note. Are you seeing now? So when I'm speaking to you ordinarily, you would not have believed what I'm saying. But there is an anointing upon it that compels you not only to believe, but receive the grace and you will stand up and receive and reproduce the result. Listen, let me tell you. Brothers and sisters, hear me. The ministry of transformation is a system you must understand. If you are in this place and you are called into ministry, whether you have started or not, pay attention. Get ready for empty pews if you don't understand the technology that transforms men. People will hype you and you will be excited for a few months waiting for the next person who will open church near you and they will all move there and leave you because they are tired of your stillness. There's got to be something that brings freshness to people. Are we together now? When a businessman comes to Koinonia, he must find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister to him. When a student comes, he must find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister. So, when our little children, our little ones, as small as they are, they must be able to find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister to them. Failure to do that, we are not in ministry. We are just acting on stage. Hallelujah. And this comes with a price. Prayer is only one of the price. It comes with diligence. That's why I challenge a lot of people, especially those who want to go into ministry. You know, most people think ministry is a lazy man's work. When you don't get a job, you know, they didn't give you employment all around, you just quietly go and start ministry. No, ministry is not for lazy people. Ministry is for diligent people. The, the hours it takes to prepare just a simple message that you deliver in, 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 in one hour or so. And now we, we live in a, a technology driven society. You mention one Greek word, you are lying about it, someone is checking right away. 
and telling his name. His name said, no, no, no. It was 1997, this word. It was a mistake. He will even say the article where you got it wrong. It takes intelligence, not just spirituality. You should not just say something. You must have something to say. Everybody is saying something. People don't listen to talkatives again. So on one side, you are contending for the power, the grace, and the anointing. But on the other side, you must give people information that is worth their time. Nobody has time to waste listening to junks and nonsense. You can impress yourself as a man of God and flatter yourself together with your workers. And then people just watch you and pity you for a few months. And finally reveal to you how much you are not blessing them by their absence in your meeting. You should miss koinonia and feel it. That's a sign that you are receiving something. That if for any reason, because of your busy schedule or travel or trip or whatever, you miss koinonia. There are thousands of people, close to 100,000 people, connecting from different parts of the world. Online, right now, listening to me as I'm speaking. Why? Some of them are unable to make it. That's a blessing. The moment our teaching is uploaded online, in 24 hours, there's 1 million downloads. In 24 hours, transformation. Somebody somewhere is depending on that truth. Are we together now? I'd like you to pray just one prayer before I continue. And say, Lord, make my life valuable. Let me be a blessing. Open your mouth and pray, please. You brought me to the earth for a reason. Lord, I don't want to live a mediocre life. The dimension of diligence it will take. The dimension of consistency it will take. To emerge triumphant. Grant me the grace. Go ahead and pray. Challenge laziness. Challenge unseriousness. Challenge mediocrity. Challenge playing around and wasting your time. The labor dimension of a successful life. The labor dimension of an impactful life. You must cry for it from heaven. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live, I live, I live. I have no fear. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is ministering one more prayer point for me that we will pray. I'd like you to pray for the next one minute with all your heart and say, Lord, there is a faulty understanding in my life that is keeping me down, that is limiting the ministry of the Holy Spirit in my life. It may have come through culture. It may have come through my pain. I cry to the heavens. Give me a visitation. I declare my disloyalty to any mindset. I declare my disloyalty to any ideology, any thinking that is not consistent with the word of God. Any thinking that is not consistent with the ways of the kingdom. Any thought pattern that is not grounded and rooted upon the working knowledge of the word. No matter how long I have sustained that knowledge, lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. I may be Igbo, I may be Yoruba, I may be Hausa, I may be whatever nation, whatever locality around the world. I insist in the name of Jesus that my mind conforms to the patterns of the kingdom. There's so much the Holy Spirit wants to do in and through my life. Something about my life is the reason why I'm poor. Something about my, my life, my mindset is the reason why the anointing cannot flow freely. There's a reason why my church is not growing. There's a reason why my life is grounded. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. 
I take responsibility. No blaming parents, no blaming government, no blaming neighbors, no blaming anyone. I take full responsibility over my destiny and I declare my willingness to change. That as the word of God comes, I receive it. I don't argue with what works. Hallelujah. Please sit down. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. I say it all the time. This thing we are trying to get to has been, is a destination that someone is currently there. Your future is someone's present already. The dimension you seek to enter in the anointing, there is a living person on earth working in it. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. I like this part of this song. That's the only part I'm interested in. We may be few who are serious about this. But the Bible says, I mean, Don Moen, really, not the Bible. It says we are surrounded. No, no. In fact, the Bible even says it. It says we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Witnesses. Men who have done it before. They grew up from poor families. And they caused them that you will not make it. But they accessed a mystery. And they rose beyond that dimension. They went to school with no one to pay their school fees. Only a box. But a dimension of God bailed them out. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. He said, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness. It's not new. You are not the first to do it. Women who were barren declared that they did not have womb. But they accessed a mystery in the kingdom that gave them womb. And they gave birth to twins and triplets. You are not the first. Don't mourn as if there is no hope. But the hope is in a dimension of the word of God you catch. Not every part of the word of God is responsible for your answer. Your answer is somewhere. Your assignment is to search it out or listen to those who have searched it out. You don't argue when you don't yet have result. It's pride. Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, You only criticize a man who you have done twice what he has not done once. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh, Lord I look to Yahweh, Yahweh, for my life and destiny, I hope is Yahweh, Yahweh, no matter what I'm going through today, Lord I look Yahweh, Yahweh, my hope is Yahweh, Yahweh, sing it with faith in your heart, I look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, he said for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah 29 11 it says they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end surely said there is an end and an expectation someone needs to prophesy this there is an end this hunger will not be forever I, I no no I may not have an anointing now but there is an end there is a day I will access a deep fountain of grace that the nations will see the hand of God upon my life. My child may not be making it now, but I tell you, brothers and sisters, there is an end. Prophesy it in one minute. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Pray, my hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, I look to Yahweh. My eyes are upon you, Jesus. They may criticize you, but fix your eyes on Jesus. They may not understand why you are this passionate. Fix your eyes, not on the mockers. Fix your eyes, not
not on the problem. Fix your eyes, not on the limitation. It says, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher. Come on, sing. We look to Yahweh. already a word for someone tonight even before we start though weeping endures for a night my bible, your bible says joy comes don't allow little hindrances on your path of greatness make it look as if God lied you have been tithing you've not seen anything, you've been praying there's no grace that is at work I tell you something is happening in the realm of the spirit, he said ye who have continued with me one day it will be like a dream. You will come out of your house in the morning and step into a dimension that you will never, never, never recover from. Listen, sit down. Let me tell you a little story. Years ago, I used to go in the night. I tell you, I feel such a strong anointing. Strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's what happens when we begin to teach truth. He's called the spirit of truth. So he comes to pack the truth that you are receiving. Every time the truth comes, it comes like an arrow. It comes upon your spirit man. And then you receive it. Capacity is given to you to rise in the spirit. Listen, listen. Years ago, every night, I would just go and pray. Pray in the spirit for hours and study. And return back. No anointing. No nothing. Then there was no access to the privileges that people had. Are we together now? That time, if someone fell under the anointing, you would take him to the hospital. Very few people understood the move of the Spirit. I would go and pray in tongues, and sometimes two, three hours prayer will turn into a vigil. And I'll finish and carry my Bible. Broke, but in the Spirit. Never understood the things of God, but in the Spirit. Controversial and mysterious, but in the Spirit. And I continued there. And God told me, he said, son, one day, men will look at you and think you are a God. I remember God told me that thing. Just continue. Sometimes with no food, I had not eaten anything. Don't think I was born inside an aircraft. No, sir. He said, for we do not. Let me tell you one of the symbols of the apostolic ministry. God will pass you through almost every problem you are anointed to solve. That is the only way the anointing comes. An apostle is not an evangelist. No. That furnace of affliction, you must pass through it. It's, it's what creates the scar. He said, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark of Christ. Let no man trouble me. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh. Yahweh, I look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Sing it one more time. Lord, we look to Yahweh. the last time now. Hallelujah. Please sit down if you can pick something to write. Let's just discuss a few things so that we can pray. When God is done with you, brothers and sisters, Except you choose. See, listen. Look at me. Let me teach you something. When you are being mentored and trained, don't change the equation you are giving. You will not be successful that way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't tamper with the equation you are giving. Be foolish enough to work with it and watch the wonder. 
it will make out of your life. Jesus said the kingdom is for children. Because if you tell a child, jump. If a Jimmy tells his daughter, get up and fly down. She will do it without thinking. Sometimes this hour, this claim that we have grown, is the reason why we never walk with God. The simplicity of spiritual things. There are so many people who want the anointing, but will never sit down to learn how it comes. You tell them this is how it comes, they will change the equation somewhere and never get it. And stay forever not getting it. Lord Jesus, let this place remain a place of transformation. We will be wicked people if we gather your people here and waste their time and not bless them. Coming here alone is a sacrifice. You don't want to know how many spirits try to stop you to come for every meeting. That you can leave your house and come here is a sign that victory started, not that victory is starting. Sir, please stand up. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Yes. The Lord is healing you. You are sick. What's wrong with you? I'm seeing your legs. You stand a little and the legs, there's pain. Come. That devil will leave you now. Hallelujah. And I'm seeing a man that the devil wants to inflict with paralysis. Like complete stroke. Sir? It was on 1st January 9th. Hold on, please. Saturday, very early, I had to rise from the village back to where I'm staying. Started. Okay. Started. When was that? 1st January. That is Sunday. 1st January? Yes. That's when this happened? Yes. My I God. rise from the village to, to Abuja. That's no. I'm seeing you... Go for a meeting in a village or something. And while you were on your way, I'm seeing something leaving you from there. This is where this came. It is, uh, we are going to look for a land. Somebody is taking the land. That's what I'm saying. saying. In a village. Yes. From there you went to Abuja. That's where the problem came from. Sir, this is not leg problem. This is witchcraft. You understand? No matter what kind of drug you take, you'll find out that it will not relieve you. I hope you're not embarrassed, sir. Well, I'm tired of the drugs. That's why I left Abuja yesterday for the care. You came from Abuja? Yes. Do you think you will go back the same? Do you think it's fair if you go back the same? No. Do you think I will be a good man of God if you go back the same? Well, you're a man of God, sir. Now, think about this. This man left Abuja and came. Now, we have, we, have, we have made all kinds of noise. We are men of God. You see the danger of not preparing? You come and stand and brag around and tell people you are hearing the voice of God. And here is someone left Abuja and came. Why should he not go to a herbalist if he cannot be healed? No, 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 no. I said it. If I were not a preacher, I would not go to a herbalist in the secret. I would go in the open. And carry the charm and come for fellowship. And sit down in front. Let a man of God look at me. If you criticize me, I say, I agree, I'm guilty. But he, I hand over the charm to you. Hold it and heal me. If you cannot, shut your mouth. You see, that's why you need an encounter. You don't talk like this without an encounter. You will make a fool of yourself. No, sir. Sir. Jesus will heal you. This is called koinonia. Hold my hand, sir. <sighs> my God. Jesus, I cause this now. Right now. Out! Just guide him. Out!
I command in the name of Jesus. May the hand of the Lord touch you right now. Sir, look at me. Lift one leg. Go ahead. Lift it. Just look at me. Forget about the leg. Lift your leg. Are you feeling any pain there now? Huh? You're seeing improvement? Yes. Right here. Look at this. Give Jesus praise. Come up. Walk. Come. Lift it. Do what you couldn't do. Can you jump? Try. Look at this. In the name of Jesus, that anointing is upon you. Never be the same. Not only this, but the Lord is restoring your finances. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Are you together with that woman? I'm seeing life leaving you. That's your wife. Wife, come. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. 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 Hold on. I'm looking at this woman in the spirit and I'm seeing a woman crying. And say, Lord, when will you visit us? Madam, please don't cry. Jesus is in this place. What is this? Children. Who is the reverend? You lost your child. Who is the reverend? My God. The one that called us that we should come here. The one that has died, I didn't carry him. It's all right. The Lord is restoring this family. Believe me when I say this. Mama, don't cry. Jesus is Lord. Daddy, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, there is a grace and anointing in this place to wipe tears. It says to comfort day that morning in Zion. There are people who are mourning, although they are in Zion. Comfort those that mourn in Zion. Is that not what the Bible says we should do? We declare comfort to you right now. Stretch your hands towards this dear family and pray in one minute. Koinonia, pray. We bring your challenge face to face with the anointing. In the name of Jesus, we bring it face to face with the anointing. The same God that has touched you now. The same God touching mommy. Touching all the children. Hallelujah. Sir, I prophesy to you that after today's meeting, from as early as tomorrow, write it down, you will begin to hear dramatic testimonies in your life. Listen, you see, listen, I don't have a prophetic office. My prophetic dimension is creative. I will not just reveal. It makes it happen. You see that? There is, there is, the revelatory dimension of the prophetic where you access what will happen and inform them so that you give them hope but the creative dimension of God is your word is what makes it happen so in the name of Jesus whether or not that possibility was in your future I put it there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ God bless you sir God bless you sir Stephen, Stephen, who is Stephen? My God, this is what happens now. Stephen, I'm hearing a name, Stephen. Stephen. If that is your name, if you are inside or outside, Stephen, I just want to speak to that person, Stephen. Your name is Stephen. My dad. My brother, look at me. God is taking the load on your head right now. I saw you coming in. I'm seeing load that is bigger than you. What? Why carry all this kind of load? Huh? Your life needs a real miracle. Almost everything about your life needs a miracle. And I'm going to pray for you. Look at me, um, gentleman. I have to pray for you because I'm seeing the devil wants to put sickness in your body. 
and I have to pray for you. The devil wants to put sickness in your body and I'll pray for you. We'll hurry up. Sorry. I hope I'm not wasting your time. Praise the Lord. I'm seeing two ladies. The anointing of the Spirit will come on them and 19 days at a stretch. The families will have breakthroughs. 19 days at a stretch. That's what the Lord is revealing to me. 19 days. 19 days. 19 days at a stretch by the Spirit. Let it be according to the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. My brother, I want to pray for you. The Lord wants to take this load away from your life. Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. Hold my hands. Jesus, please let your grace walk upon his life. I set you free right now in the name of Jesus. Sickness leaves your body. You have no business with infirmity. I curse it in your life in the name of Jesus. My brother, God wants to help you, but there is a lot of disorganization in your life. You need a lot of order. Huh? You need a lot of order in your life. God is helping you in the name of Jesus. I'm hearing the prayer of someone's mother in my ears. And that prayer will be answered now with the anointing touching that person. Right as I'm speaking now, the mother of that person is praying. families free. Bless them by your spirit. Bless them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come promise. God is giving you wisdom. A new dimension of wisdom. That's what God is giving you. Fresh wisdom. You need it for this season. The Lord is giving you wisdom. Great wisdom. Great wisdom. Great wisdom. Can you just allow me flow as the Holy Spirit is flowing? Is that alright? Is that alright? So that you don't feel... Sometimes God... Somebody at the back, the ushering stand, the power of God is touching that person right now. Someone right at the back, the ushering stand. And the Lord is saying it is over. This is the prophetic word. It is over. It is over. It is over. I'm prophesying to 11 people. The mountain that stands before you. The mountain that stands, 11 people, 11 people. No, no, as I speak, the power of God will confirm it. The mountain that stands before you, my God says I should tell you to be swallowed up, swallowed up, swallowed up, swallowed up. Swallowed up. I place the word of God upon this. The mountain that stands before you is swallowed up in the name of Jesus. The mountain that stands before you is swallowed up by the anointing of the Spirit. Pay attention when you receive from God and expect to testify. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is visiting someone in the worship team. I hear laughter, laughter, laughter. That's what I hear in my spirit, laughter. I place the word of God upon this, laughter. That's what I'm hearing in the spirit. The Lord is ministering to me. Someone, radical breakthrough and transformation is coming upon someone in the worship team. Laughter. That's what the spirit of God is ministering to me. Ministering to me. Ministering to me. The lady standing near you. The anointing of the Spirit is upon her. It's a new chapter in your life. That's what the Spirit of God says. A new chapter in your life. New chapter in your life. The old is gone. The old is gone. The old is gone. The old is gone. Behold, I make all things new. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing one of the usher ladies climbing a ladder in the spirit. I don't know who, but I'm seeing one of the ladies, you are an usher, climbing a ladder in the spirit. And the Lord says I should prophesy it. You are an usher, I know you are walking, but this miracle is for you, climbing a ladder in the realm of the spirit. A curse, marriage curse, is being broken in two families. Two families, specifically, now. It's a curse. It's a curse. It's a curse. Shabbat alakata. Brata sebeteke lekataya. Break that curse. Break that curse. There are two ladies here. One is outside. You've been having irregular menstruation. This is, this is a very dangerous situation. And the Lord is touching that person. One is outside. And the Lord is setting that person free now. Now from that devilish thing. It must go now. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Paul said that when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech. People are tired of all these things. People need real breakthroughs in their lives. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power Let me just speak to one more family and then we'll sit down. There is an Igbo lady or an Igbo family from Abia State. God is setting them free right now. I'm seeing it in the realm of the spirit. Abia State. And the Lord is saying it's time for the captivity of that family to be rolled away. It's time for the captivity of that person. Lord, I don't know who that person is, but I stretch my hands right now. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus from Abia. That's what the Spirit of God is ministering to me. Lord, whether online, whether here, wherever it is, I pray that your power will break that family free from the shackles of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone following online from Joss. From Joss. You have an ear problem. And the Lord is setting you free right now. From Joss. You have an ear problem. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Sit down. God bless you. A few minutes. Let's just touch on something tonight. Please take something to write and um, let me just teach briefly. Our time is gone. I love it when the Holy Spirit steps in to do these things. Look at me. Do you know why many of us may never walk in these dimensions? The motif of our heart is to create an impression where people think this is an anointed man. If that is your motif, God will never trust you with this kind of power. You will destroy people with it. Are we together? Most people don't know that the anointing of the Spirit can kill the vessel carrying it. The anointing is like electricity. The same electricity that gives light can shock someone to death. Are we together now? When God anoints you, the standards become higher of His dealings with you. Someone can do something else and go scot free. But for you, just because Moses was angry, God said you are not entering the promised land. Yet the people who grumbled entered. So be careful when you just say, give me an anointing. There, there are rules. There is, there is a system with which you walk with this thing. 
pride. A lot of us here, if God should trust us with this kind of grace, people are in trouble. Especially when you enter a meeting where someone has doubted you for a long time. You say, let me, let, he's, he's the one first. Let me release that anointing on the doubter. I'm, I'm rubbish him. Then he will use that as a lesson and know that I am Apostle Joshua Selman. And God says, no way. My, the death of my son is too expensive for that nonsense. I hear the chains falling. No, I'm not singing. I'm prophesying. That's what I'm hearing. You will see it happen now. His word will never go for it. Don't mind me. Just allow me to do my madness. I hear the chains falling. Literally. I'm hearing physical chains. I hear the chains. I hear the chains. Lord, let them fall from my life. That's what the anointing was designed to do. Hallelujah. Please sit down. I want to teach you a very big secret tonight. Philippians chapter 2. The Lordship of Christ. Philippians chapter 2. The Lordship of Christ. Esther Yahi. The Lord is saying, I am helping you. I am bringing you help. I'm bringing you help. Where your strength has failed, I am helping you. That's what the Lord is saying. What your parents could not do, I am helping you. I am helping you. Philippians chapter 2. The Lordship of Christ. What I want to teach you tonight... It's a very powerful secret. It's one of the mysteries that control walking in spiritual power. So I want you to pay attention to it. Hallelujah. Now, there are, there are different dimensions of God as revealed in Scripture. Please follow me. Different dimensions of God as revealed in Scripture. And when a believer comes to Jesus Christ, when you come to what we call surrender your heart to him. It is important for us to understand what dimension of God is revealed. Are we together now? Every dimension of Jesus in the Bible is responsible for certain outcomes of a believer's life. The names of God all through the Bible represent different dimensions of him that were encountered by different people. So when they met the God that provides, they called him Jairus. Are we together? When they met a God who could override people's wrongs, was merciful and compassionate, they called him Rapha or Rapheka. Are we together now? So the names of God defined the dimensions of his dealings and his operation with people. Now, when you come to Jesus, listen carefully. When you come to Jesus as a sinner, you hear an altar call or the Spirit of God convicts you. Right? The Bible says he will convict the, the world of three things. Of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the unbeliever. The ministry of conviction. Bringing him to a point where he will see his need. The dimension of God that is revealed at salvation is Jesus our Savior. It is important you understand that. The saving dimension of Jesus. When you, when you preach Jesus as Savior, you reveal the love of God expressed to man through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Listen, listen. Hearing is the grace of God revealed. The Bible says that we are saved by that grace. Are we together now? So, when you reveal Jesus as Savior, is the dimension of God revealed as Father desiring to bring alienated sons and daughters who have been alienated, the Bible says, from the commonwealth of Israel. And he brings that through the substitutionary sacrifice, the atoning sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus, our Savior, dying on the cross for your sin and my sin to fulfill the law that says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Are we together now? So, when you receive Jesus as Savior, and it's important, you know, 
many believers doubt their salvation. And the reason why they doubt their salvation is they do not know what the condition for a believer to be saved is. There's something they used to teach us called assurance of salvation. Assurance of salvation is not the same thing as salvation. Assurance of salvation is the basis upon which your salvation lies. So you know it and then you can know whether or not you are saved and in Christ. The Bible gives us very clear parameters to know that a person is saved. Are we together now? The Bible says, for instance, in Romans chapter 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, the Bible says, who shall ascend to the heavens and so on and so forth. He said, but the word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart, even the word of faith that we preach. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him, so, there are several things that must be believed by the believer. Those of us who are of the Anglican background, there's something that they call Anglican and I think part of Catholic, uh, the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed is a compendium of the revelation of Jesus as Savior, chanted in a poem, right? So, you say the things you believe that makes you a Christian, right? So you start, I believe in God the Father and Jesus, His Holy Son, so on and so forth. You know, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was dead and crucified, buried. He rose again on the third day, not the fourth day. It's important to believe exactly what the Bible says. There are people who believe Jesus rose up on the seventh day. You are wrong. You are still not saved. Jesus did not, because he, the spirit of truth cannot be administered with a lie. It has to be true. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Very important. There are many things about the Christian faith that becomes a foundation. If you do not believe in the virgin birth, you are not a Christian. I look forward to times when I begin to write books. There are many truths that must be taught the body of Christ. The virgin birth of Jesus is important. The virgin birth of Jesus is the only basis that authenticates his divinity. That means that Mary had Jesus without the assistance of a man. Otherwise, he could not have been divine. So the virgin birth is not just proving that the lady who carried Jesus kept herself until Jesus came. It's more than that. It's more than that. You must believe that Jesus became a man and walked on the earth. The earthly ministry of Jesus is part of the basis. Because the Bible tells us he became a man. That is the only reason why you should believe that he is a high priest who has been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Are we together now? Yeah. You must believe in the fact that he was sinless. Now, this is the part people don't believe. If you don't believe that Jesus was sinless while he walked upon the earth, it's a terrible thing. There are all kinds of theologies going around saying, no, no look, um, he, it's impossible. He was a man with flesh and blood. 100% man. It's important for us to... No, no, no. The Bible tells us and we trust the word of God. We were not there, but we believe in the integrity of the word. Because the Bible says, holy men wrote as they were moved of the spirit. And the spirit of God is the spirit of truth. Meaning he cannot lie. It's not that he does not lie. He cannot lie. Are we together? This is the confidence upon which our faith is grounded on. And you must believe he did not die on the road. Jesus did not die by car accident. How he died matters to your salvation. Right? The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How did that happen? For it is written, according to the Mosaic law, cursed is every man that hangs on the tree. The man who dies from starvation is not cursed. He just died. So if Jesus died without dying on the tree, he could not be a curse for man. Cost is he that hanged on the tree, right? That the blessings of Abraham, what is the blessings of Abraham? Not car, not money, justification by faith. That's what the Bible calls the blessings of Abraham. The blessings of Abraham is different from the blessing. There are two different things. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. God preached the gospel to Abraham, right? That's what Apostle Peter taught us. And Abraham believed God that it was credited unto him for righteousness. So we, like faithful Abraham, partake of that blessing by giving an opportunity to believe God and receive that credit of righteousness. That's the blessing of Abraham. 
so that we are justified by faith and then it gives us access to receive the promise of the spirit through faith galatians chapter 3 is what teaches us that so it is important that we understand that jesus as savior talks about the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus now listen please there is nothing that any man can do to be saved no 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 by by that i mean there there is no contribution there is a participation but there is no contribution your participation is to receive by faith that's the only thing but you do not have a contribution when jesus is revealed as savior the moment jesus is revealed as savior he the love of god is revealed unassisted unassisted the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus that's the apex of the demonstration of the love and the grace of god behold what manner of love the bible says the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called that's the process are we together are you following me now i'm taking our time to give us this basis so that it will strengthen our understanding there is no man there is no good works of any man that can be the basis upon which your salvation no 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 it's, it's impossible i cannot be saved on the grounds of my works i cannot be saved on grounds of things that i have done no every time you look up to what you have done to be saved you are out of the grace of god but the moment you are saved not walking the works of kingdom is the abuse of that grace you see it now before you are saved you only receive after you are saved you are empowered the dimension of grace upon you no longer just becomes receiving it becomes an empowerment to do i must walk the works of him that sent me now this is the balance we must bring over the grace message there are two dimensions there is the grace that appears as god's mercy given to man simply because of our helplessness to be able to attain that position of righteousness the very nature of god but now having obtained that righteousness we are further empowered by the ministry of the spirit to begin to produce what the bible calls the fruits of righteousness are we together but that's not where i'm going tonight there is a dimension of jesus christ that many people have not come into terms with it has not been a revelation to them and that's why they don't walk in power that's why they cannot walk in certain dimensions it's called the lordship of christ it's one of the it's one of the the pillars of the christian faith you cannot claim you are a christian and not acknowledge the lordship of christ Philippians chapter 2, please, from verse 5. Let this mind, he says, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So, the word mind there means an understanding. There is an understanding that must be in you. Next verse says, Though, who, although, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. 7 says, But he made himself of no reputation, and he took upon himself the form of a servant, and was in the likeness of men. 8 and being found in the fashion of man he humbled himself you see that follow the progression and was obedient unto death mark that obedient unto death obedient even to the point of death obedient with no resistance we are studying the servanthood of jesus now the hallmark of his servanthood was what obedience that costed him his life right and then he says even death on the cross verse 9 wherefore on the strength of his obedience unto death although being god god had so highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name next verse it says that at the name of jesus not necessarily the mention of it it's not the mention of it that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in the earth and of things under the earth verse 11 and every tongue should confess that jesus christ is what the name that was given to him we have discussed this in koinonia the name is not jesus i hope you know this the name that was given to him is not jesus jesus was the name his mother gave him when they gave birth to him correct christ was the name he assumed when he became full of the spirit 
But Lord was conferred upon him. That's the name. The name is not Jesus. The name is Lord. That confess that Jesus, who became the Christ in his earthly walk, is now Lord. Are you seeing that now? To the glory of God the Father. So, the Lordship of Christ is very important. Write this down, please. There are a number of Hebrew words that are translated Lord. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to play around with Hebrew and Greek words, but just a few of them. There is Jehovah. Right? Jehovah is translated Lord in capital letter. It was his name revealed to, to the Jews as the God of the Hebrews. But there is Adon, from where we get the word Adonai. Right? It's translated Lord. Lord. The Greek word is curious. Don't, don't, don't worry. I'm just giving you a theological background of the word Lord. And what that means is sovereign controller. Listen, please. It means master. It means owner. But it also means sovereign controller. It gives you a picture of one who either by his own strength or by your permission has unrestrained access to everything about your life. Are you getting the idea now? Either by his own strength, so I can come into someone's house and push the door by my strength. With respect to that combat, I am Lord because I push the door. Are we together? Or the person can open the door and welcome me. I am still Lord. So when the Bible gives the idea of Lordship, it talks of ownership, it talks of sovereign power, it talks of dominion, but it also talks of unrestrained access. Are we together? So Jesus being Lord is a revelation of one who has absolute control. This dimension of the Lordship of Jesus has not been experienced in many believers. Listen. Did you know that you can have a revelation of Jesus as Savior and yet not have a revelation of Him as Lord? When you have a revelation of Jesus as Lord, it will change everything in your life as we are going to see shortly. The Lordship of Jesus is the dominion of His person over every aspect of your life. And there is a law in the realm of the Spirit. Your degree of submission to authority is your degree of dominion. Listen, listen. The centurion came to Jesus and he said, you know, this and that, my son is ill and please, I want, you know, Jesus said, okay, you are a captain in the army, let me respect you and come to your house. And he shocked Jesus with a revelation. He said, no, 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 no. You don't need to come to my house. Speak the word only. For I am a man under authority, the authority of the Roman government. So my strength comes with my submission to that authority. And because I am under authority, I tell one, go and he must go. Come and he must come. So he said, Jesus, I know that you are not here by yourself. You too, you are under an authority. And Jesus said, I have not found such faith, such understanding, that a man knows the relationship between submission and power. In fact, here's how Apostle James puts it. He says, submit yourself to the mighty hand of God. Then, he says, resist the devil and he will, he will not flee because of your ability to resist him. He will flee because of the authority that backs you while you are resisting. So your own power is derived from your authority. Is the Greek word exousia. The capacity to legislate on behalf of one on the strength of your, co your connection. Are we together now? The best description of that ability is marriage. So if a man is married with his wife, if the man is not around, the wife can safely, if he's a responsible man, the wife can safely act in the stead of the man. Is that true? Yeah. So Jesus gives his bride, the church, the unrestrained ability to demonstrate the reality of his person on earth. But there is a condition. The condition is that like a faithful woman, only becomes a faithful woman on the strength of her submission to her husband. Is that not true? The Bible says, wives, do what? Submit yourselves. So the church that is now the wife of the Lord Jesus, the bride of Christ, derives her power by submitting. 
The revelation of the Lordship of Jesus is why demons eat up people cheaply. Why principalities and powers destroy people. Because when they come, they see that you have believed in the substitutionary power of Jesus, but you have not believed in his life gaining dominance over you. Write this down. The dominion of the word in us is the clearest measure of the lordship of Christ in you. The dominion of the word of God. Dominion means the degree to which your life is a reflection of obedience to the word. The dominion of the word in us is the clearest measure of the lordship of Christ. So if you say Jesus is Lord of my life, all I need to do is to see to what degree your life confirms to the word. And then I know whether or not he is Lord over your life. Because that Jesus we speak about is the leading logos. John 1 verse 1. The word of God. Jesus gave us a mysterious statement. Say, how can you believe God whom you have not seen when you cannot believe your brother? So if you cannot believe the word of God written, you will be a liar to claim you believe God. The Bible already said that God you believe inspired men to write this. If you do not believe scripture, then it means you are not a believer. Listen, the dominion, by dominion, the unrestrained access that you have given the word of God to find expression in your life is the clearest measure. Look at me. Jesus being Lord in our lives is not something that, is just, it's not a lip service. Your life must demonstrate that death. Your life must demonstrate it. There are two standards that demonstrate that Jesus is Lord over our lives. Write it down quickly. Number one is surrender. Your degree of surrender. If Jesus is Lord of your life, let me see it. By how much of surrender. How much you are willing to decrease that he will increase. Not how much you are willing to pray in tongues. Not how much you are willing to preach. No, not how much you are willing to climb scriptures. Surrender. This is where many believers in the church are shortchanged and greatly cheated. The difficulty to surrender everything. King of my life, you are my all. And I live for you alone. You're the king of my life. You have my all. And I lay my life. Greater love had no man than this, than a man laid down. The degree to which you have surrendered your finances, the degree to which you have surrendered your emotions. Look up, please. You can be born again. You have given God your heart, but you have not given God your money. He's not Lord of your life. You have given God your, your heart, but you have not given God your intellect. You see, the area Satan attacks in your life is the area that the Lordship of Jesus has not yet covered. That becomes his place, his point of attack in a man's life. When Satan comes into your life, he can't just attack you anyhow. He keeps searching. He does it by trial and error. So he looks at your giving life. He looks at your obedience and he knows that Jesus is not yet Lord here. He looks at your ego and he knows that you can give every other thing but your reputation. And then his attack comes from the dimension of your reputation. Jesus is truly Lord in your life when you are completely surrendered. Everything. It, it is a theme in this ministry. How that you must surrender everything to God. It's called death. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ, the Bible says. Nevertheless, I live. He said, yet not I, but the life that I now live in the flesh, that is the body. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Right? Who loved me and gave himself for me. It's a realm called Galatians 2.20. Brothers and sisters, please look at me. Whatever, hold on, let me press a point. Whatever in your life you cannot give God, is the idol in your life. And that's what Satan will use to kill you. 
there are many people is relationships and association you can give god everything but friends are we together yeah everything but friends everything but your education oh i'm brilliant you know i have a master's in this i have a phd in this and that and that i'm an intellectual i mean i'm i'm, I'm this and that and that I, I have 12 masters and i mean you have to respect that and the devil says that's right he will use it and destroy your life everything you don't hand over to god cannot be trusted to bless you whatever it is in the kingdom things only bless us to the degree we've handed them over to god so the test of lordship was best demonstrated in the life of the patriarch Abraham. Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. The Bible says how that God tested Abraham. And he says, Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Right? And he says, and it came to pass after these things that God did test or tempt Abraham. He, God was trying to get to bless Abraham. But he knew that Abraham must be tested. That lordship test. Take thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee to the land of Moriah, and offer him for a bond offering. Abraham, come promise. Abraham wakes up in the morning to a prophetic instruction. After waiting for over 25 years to have a child. Please pay attention. And then the Lord tells him, carry this child. Don't discuss with your wife. Go and kill him. And then the Bible says, Abraham arose early. Everybody say obedience. Unto death. Say it, obedience. Unto death. And he held his son. Do you know what that means? Gathered the servants and said, look, we have to go and offer sacrifices unto God. And Abraham was thinking in his heart, my future. The son of every man represents his future. The one who continues the name. And he says, Abraham, destroy your future. Can you give up your future to prove that you love me? Ah! Abraham said, this is hard, but I will do it. You see, every time I teach about surrender, it does me something. Because it's something that has happened in my own life. It's a circumcision that only when you have given up everything, Master, we have left all to follow you. Left all to follow you. And he took Abraham. He took Isaac. When he got to the base of the mountain, he knew that the servants would think he has run mad and would stop him. And he said, you people should wait. He started climbing the mountain with his own son. Only son. His future. The son of promise. Waited more than 25 years. And the son Isaac started getting concerned. And he said, Father, I see the wood. I see the fire. Of course, he saw the knife too. Where is the sacrifice? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. In his heart, he was saying, Son, before your arrival, there was one whom I loved. And not even my love for you can compete. My God. That is the realm of men and women who will walk in power. Who can give God anything, including their lives. He tied Isaac. You can imagine Isaac begging his father and saying, Father, please, if I offended you, forgive me. And he said, No, no, it's not about offense. It's about the Lordship. And God was seeing a foreshadow of what only Him could do. Do you know people could not give their children easily like that? God was about to give His only son. And here He was seeing a mortal man. And Abraham carried Isaac and dropped Isaac. The angels were wondering, asking questions. And said, I hope this guy is correct. His future is about to be jeopardized. He lifted the knife. Romans chapter 4. The Bible says that Abraham already planned, paraphrasing, that when he killed Isaac, he would beg God to bring Isaac back to life. In other words, God has obeyed you. Now my son is dead. Please bring him back to life. And when he lifted up the knife, God said, stop, Abraham, for now, I know, not when you left your house. Now, now, I know that thou fearest me, seeing that you did not withhold your son from me. 
here comes a blessing. Now I swear by my name. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying. Listen, many people claim the blessings of Abraham. The Jews wanted to do that. And they said, we are the sons of Abraham. And he said, if you are the sons of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. The works of, of Abraham is loyalty and obedience unto death. That's how you get the blessings of Abraham. It's not by chanting and quoting. <clears throat> you are not qualified when you cannot submit and surrender everything. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if it is God you are working with, He will demand everything from you. Everything. Just listen to what I'm telling you. He will demand everything. Everything means he must probe it until it comes under his lordship. Just when you love this brother, you cannot sleep because of him. Then God comes to you in the night and says, My daughter, you have been saying you love me so much. But I'm asking you a question. Can you leave this guy? He didn't say leave him. It's just a question. And he said, no, this has to be a demon. I'm 32. I need to marry by March. What kind of lack of breakthrough is this? Apostle prophesied miracle service that I must marry. And now one spirit, and you reject and cast. When you finish, God says, are you done? Answer my question. The still small voice. Can you leave the brother? And just when you are about to think his call comes, and he sends a text. Thank God for the gift of you in my life. I say, God, I reject this. I, I reject this. Don't play with my heart. And God says, that's the idol in your heart. If you cannot lay him aside, you finish with your salary and you are happy. Go to one, buy trousers and shirt. And God says, carry all that money. Join it to whatever else you have in your account. And just when they send you money from abroad, and says, carry it and go and say, I say, God, Abba, you are joking. Even you, you know I would do it. There's no point asking me. You already know I would not obey you. Because it can't be you. You are a good God. You don't punish people like that. You see how we use scriptures? And then God looks at you. Whereas his plan was that by that act of obedience, he will bless you. Do you know there are times... God has told me, please, I'm not saying you should bring money to me after the service. That's not what I'm saying. Get me correct so you don't think I'm using someone to manipulate you. You know I'm blessed. Listen. Do you know that there are times God has spoken to me that he was going to test certain people and he would give them instructions to empty their accounts, for instance, and carry the money and come and give me. Now, God did not tell me their faces, but God told me that when they come, I should not collect it. I should only bless it and give them back. And you see the people dragging themselves. They stand like prisoners who just came out. I mean, they, they can't believe it. They are surprised that they are obeying. Because they are not supposed to obey that kind of instruction. Obedience unto death. While you are laughing, I hope you get what I'm saying. The implications of the Lordship of Christ. And then they come and stand. And sometimes... It's not like I pray on the money and give them immediately. I just bless it and I said, Alright, um, the Lord will honor you. And they live sad. You know something, you know that something died. God, is this you? I did this. Did they charm me? And after three days, I called them and I said, This is what the Lord has said. I should bless. You. No, 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 Apostle. And I said, No. And within one week, their lives changed to another dimension. When you pass the Lordship test, no charm, believe me, no principality, no enchantment will survive you because you are under an authority that is committed to defending you. Hallelujah. One time I heard, I think one of our people here was stranded somewhere and the person called me, he was a worker, and he called me and he said, I'm a worker in Koinonia. I'm stranded here and there and there. And when I verified that the story was true, I said immediately, we'll try to get resources to you immediately. Why? Because the fact that that person identified as a worker, and we know that the person is a faithful worker, puts pressure on my integrity to defend the person. Are we together now? Yeah. That's why God does not show up and defend many of us. 
Some of you will go for a meeting now and say there is a lady wearing yellow. Whether you see her or not, the power of God will touch you and everybody is watching you and say, Ah! Apostle must be carrying a charm. It's not that easy. It's lordship. The key is lordship that I may decrease so that he, Christ, will increase. Have you laid down your Isaac? Everybody please look at me carefully. Don't say yes. Laying down your Isaac is... Do you know there are certain Isaacs you cannot lay down? You can only give God permission to carry them. You don't have the strength to lay it down. Hmm. Koinonia is quiet tonight. Because you suspect God will do something about this message. I assure you he will. Don't, don't even try to hear. He will. Right away. The God I serve. There are prayers that you don't pray twice to answer. Let me tell you the kind of prayer God answers once. Lord, have your way. Ah, music to the ears of the Lord. Have your way. That's exactly because he really will have his way. But you see, you must trust him to know he will not destroy you. Look what he made out of our lives. I will worship him forever. Love him forever. Because this God is true. I will You must get to a point where you can lay everything. Look at me. There are some of you, you claim Jesus is Lord. And the Lord just tells you, take one of your shoes out of the ten you have. Just take one shoe and you say, no, 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 God, you can't do this. You, he's not Lord. Brothers and sisters, you will never be blessed that way. As a man of God, there are times they will invite you somewhere. And you have all kinds of honorariums waiting. And then another small gathering somewhere and God will say, that's the one. The gathering where you are the one who supports them after the meeting. You finish and say, I'm aware you guys don't have bike money. Take 1,000. And God says, that's the one you go to. Let me show you why many people never walk in power. The secret of power is the revelation of the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus submitted, obeyed unto death. Wherefore, God so highly exalted him. Submit your finances to the principles of God and see the wonder he will make out of your life. Submit your emotions to the control of Jesus and see what he will do with you. Submit your gift and talent. Carry all your certificates and kneel down before him and say, Lord, you are the reason why I have these masters. I put it before you. What do you want me to do with it? And God says, that's all. Somebody will stop sleeping in NMPC. It does, I don't care whether you read whatever. God will wake somebody and say, bless my child because he has now put me in control of that certificate. You can carry it on your own and move around looking for job. And somebody will say, are you, are you with masters? As you, can you manage gates, man? You say, Abba, me? Because you are the one looking for it. But when you surrender it, surrender is powerful. I don't know how to tell you this thing. It's something I've done. Oh, listen, this man you are seeing standing before you can give God anything. Ask God. Ask him. Money, ah, that one is not even, I don't have to be a Christian to do that one. Years ago, the Lord asked me a question and said, Can you give me your life? And I told him, No. I honestly thought about it and I said, I can't give him my life. I can give you my heart to be persecuted. I can give you my ears to hear nonsense from critics, but I'm not sure I can give you my life. Because I was sincere and the Lord did something for me. Believe me. Like Paul, for me now, Joshua Selman, to live is Christ, to die is gain. God uses a business terminology for, for death. I won't die, you, you try to kill me, you are wasting your time. You don't know how many times they've tried to kill me. But now it's not for fear. I need to be alive to do many serious things for the kingdom. So it's not just fear, oh, accident. Ask my people what happens when we are traveling. There was a time I think we were going to Lagos or so. Or we're, I think we are coming from Ibadan. The plane was shaking as if somebody was doing high jump on it. Everybody, you know, first people start being uncomfortable. Everybody just greets their neighbor. I hope you are okay. And then later on, people want to on phone and snap so that whatever happens. Ask them. I, I sleep all through. 
Do you know the mysteries that surround my life to die? Yeah, yeah. Paul died. Immediately the people left. He resurrected himself. I said, let's, let's continue. Don't mind these lousy people. When he was done, he said, I'm ready to be poured out as a drink offering. I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up. Are you blessed? Many people reject death out of fear. Not the confidence of what their submission to God has brought. Please, Koinonia, don't trivialize what I'm telling you. If you want to see power and triumph, you want to see battles being fought for you, come under the authority of the Lord Jesus and see what will happen. What will it cost you? Hold on. It will cost you only one thing. Your ambitions, yourself, your will. Your will is the price to pay for Jesus to be Lord. Your will. Your will. Self. I want it my way. It must be my way. I want to live in Abuja by myself. God says, go to Zamfara. He says, I cast that spirit. Zamfara, where? I'm, I, I, the Bible says, a land flowing with milk and honey. And you go to Abuja and live like an armed robber there. Hopping from place to place because the hand of God is not there. Are we together? Yeah. To sacrifice your will is one of the hardest things for a believer to do. Thy will be done in my life. Thy will be done in my life. Lord, thy will be done in my life. This is how Christians walk. We come to God with our desires and then we arrange scriptures that will force him to have to give us our desires and we are afraid of telling him nevertheless, Lord, this is my desire but what is your opinion? We don't want it. When you can say nevertheless, Jesus is Lord of your life. Lord, I want to buy this house but nevertheless, I died to my will. Koinonia, please hear me. I bring you to a place of power tonight when everything about your life revolves around the purposes of the kingdom where he becomes Lord over your life. Are we together? Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So when you have your ambitions, this is how I want my life to be. This is how I want my ways to be. And God says, whatever it is, this is my plan for you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you, you, a future. You have trusted people who don't have guarantee over your life. Why not hand everything over to him? Take now thy only son, whom thou lovest, and offer him as a bond offering. Your journey to power is a dream until you can sacrifice all to him. Not sacrifice some. Not sacrifice the most important ones. Everything. That you get to a point today where if God says empty your, your bank account, yes sir. You get to a point where God says sow your car or your house, yes sir. Many carnal people will insult you and call you stupid. Where God sits down and God says look promise. I want you to get up now and go to Togo. Your life from March starts in Togo. Go and stay there. For as long as it is Him. When you have lost the ability to tell God, no, He is Lord of your life. That's when you will see the power of God. That's when you will speak and have Him back you. Not just because somebody laid hands on you. You know, you've heard me say it in Koinonia many times. Hold on that so many people, I'm sure some of you are waiting now after service to see me and as soon as you see me, you want to hold my shoe it's not there, the power is not in the shoe you can carry it and go with it it's not in the shoe the power is not even in my hands coming on you the power is in a posture in the realm of the spirit a posture of complete surrender the day I stop that I will never see that power in my life again are we together? Jesus, be Lord of my life. 
Don't just say, I, I, Lord, I know you too. You know you are Lord. He said, don't, I don't know. If you say, I am Lord, I am watching. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and will not do, do, obedience, obedience, obedience? This is where greed comes from. This is where selfishness comes from. This is why many people are poor. It's not because they are not business people. It's not because of this and that, all kinds of things. You know, people read all kinds of business books. Listen, let me tell you something. You know that Kononia is full of entrepreneurs here and there. There are millionaires in this place, silent millionaires just sitting looking around. They are very blessed people in this place. But I can tell you this, much more than business acumen or whatever it is, if God cannot get your heart, you are a joker as far as impact in the kingdom is concerned. So if God has declared for us as a family of faith that this is our year of triumph, then we must get to a point in our lives where all, everybody say all. Say it, say all. All. You have surrendered your will to the extent that if God looks at you and says no marriage, you say, Kai, God, this is painful, Lord, but your will be done. I just said married someone. I mean, I felt the shock. It just entered some of us. I said, I, I, I rebuked that one. Uh, Apostle, you are going too far. Just. Abba. Lord, you have everything in this ministry. There is no instruction you will give us that we will not do. You ask the leaders. There is nothing God says to be done. That will not be done. If God says empty all the ministry account savings, reserves, anything, Monday morning, it's me that will supervise it. It will go. You can publish it in the newspaper and say, look, stupid men of God are here again. No problem. Let the stupidity yield results. We are too carnal. That's why we don't see the power of God. There's too much carnality, sensually driven. Driven by intellect. Oh, you know, if you add A plus B, we are intelligent being C plus. No, 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 no. When you come to the kingdom, the word of God is your modus operandi. You have to live by it. Find out what happened to the lives of people who obeyed God in scripture. Mad instructions, but they obeyed. And God vindicated them and blessed them. Koinonia, please hear me. You must rise to a point in the name of Jesus Christ where nothing becomes too much for you to give him. I'm showing you where the devil is destroying you. Do you know why many people are poor? Because they have not handed the affairs of their finances to God. Believe me, recession is biting people, lashing out on people. And the simple reason is they have not handed over their finances to God. You believe your survival comes through your job, so it will punish you. You believe your survival comes through your uncle. So in the day you try to call your uncle and he does not pick, he said, no, nothing will kill my uncle. He has to remain alive to take care of me. You are trusting in man. Woe unto any man who puts his strength in a man. You believe what I'm telling you? This is how the Lord trained me. Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That's what the Lord said to me. It's a promise. And he's kept it. He's kept it. Everything God gives me is not a problem for him because he knows that it belongs to him. Can God give you something and take it back? You know, it's like our little ones here. You can give them something now. They will collect and you say, give me back and they will refuse. That's how many of us are. Oh God, give me divine health. And then he says, all right, can you use it for my house? I say, no, oh God, now that I'm, I mean, uh. Esther used her beauty for the glory. When he became Lord over her beauty, she became queen. Everything Jesus becomes Lord over prospers. Whatever he's not Lord over suffers. It's a law. Everything Jesus is allowed to become Lord over prospers. To be Lord is not just to declare and say Lord. Uh -uh. To be Lord means you are willing to abide by his terms over that affairs. So over your finances, when you say Jesus is Lord, what you are saying is, as far as kingdom finance is concerned, I am ready to live by all the principles. So you tithe in a delight some way. When you carry your tithe to the house of God, you don't frown as if you are going to bribe God. Jesus, I thank you for the privilege of bringing a tenth. When you are sowing a seed, 
when you are giving, you are knowing that I'm opening the floodgates of heaven. And Lord, I thank you. Not that you are saying, God, this money I'm giving, if no return comes, uh -uh, he is Lord. Whether he blesses me or not, believe me, I cannot accuse him. What will be the accusation? What will be the accusation? That God is not faithful? If I die of sickness today, the last word that will come out of my mouth is, Lord, you are the healer. And then I'll rest. Society, listen, is full of people with high blood pressure. Do you know what causes high blood pressure? Ask the doctors, they will tell you. Because you are in charge of your own world. And there is pressure to make it work. I have to pay the school fees of my child. What will people say if I cannot pay it? And so you go around putting yourself in trouble. No, no. I am, I am 40 years. At my age, I should have a car. So I have to get a car. I have to hustle around. And so you are trying. And somebody will dupe you. And you come back and almost high blood pressure. No, no, no. People cannot say I'm buried. I've been married for five years. Small, small boys and girls are now giving birth. Me, that I'm like their mother, I will do anything. And you go and meet a herbalist and you land in trouble. You see how the lack of surrender to God is the reason for stress. I've preached this again and again and I will repeat it. Brothers and sisters, there is a place in Christ where men can be free. I bring you to the place of freedom where you hand over everything about your life and rest. You are carrying a load that is too much for you. This year, I must build a house. Whether the devil likes it or not, a good plan. But you are now trying to do it by the strength of the flesh. You now go and borrow money from the bank. As soon as you borrow money from the bank, they now steal it. You are in trouble. No house, no money. High blood pressure starts. And then the devil says, okay, let me do. Go and borrow another one. You get into trouble. By August, you are almost dying. You can't get up in the morning and breathe well. You see someone of 27 looking like, like 59. You ask him what is happening in Nigeria. No, it's not Nigeria. It is your understanding. Because there are still happy people in this country. Is God speaking to us? There are many students under pressure. I must get a job by myself. I must work service. I'm, no, 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 no. See, I want you to be... Look, trust God's responsibility over your life. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. If God does not give you a wife, you can't marry. Well, you can marry, but what you will be responsible for whoever and whatever you marry. If except the Lord builds if God does not give you a job you can lobby your way and get a job that will punish you your joy leaves from the day you get that job it's only God that can give you a ministry you can organize people who will steal from you, criticize you they are the ones who will pay people in the newspaper to say let's confess one day we went to the back of one fence and he rubbed one oil on my face the same people I trust in him. I've handed my entire life to him. Such a realm of freedom. You put pressure on his integrity through your obedience. Lord, I obey you. If nothing happens, I said it in one of the meetings in Koinonia, never claim to be giving God the glory when you are the one taking the shame. Never claim to be giving God the glory when you are the one taking the shame. We live in a society where we are so shame conscious. Ah! Look at the shame they have brought to me. That's why you will suffer for nothing. Shame! That word is a, is a word that you hear being used everywhere. Let them not say I'm not rich. Ah! Sh I don't want shame. So you go and borrow money and buy bottles of minerals. And then from there the person says, look, the next day I won't talk to you again. I'm coming to come and carry my bottles in the presence of your visitors. Leave everything to God. Tonight we are going to do a handover ceremony. Not from one power to the other. Hand over of your life and destiny and say, Lord, this load is killing me. I can't sleep. God designed sleep. There are many of us here, we've not slept for days. It's not just demon spirit. Stress. Stress. You see a pastor of 100 members not sleeping. 
You ask him where he said, where will we get generator by Sunday? Mr. Man, you didn't call yourself. Calm down. Five minutes in the presence of God. God will get up and speak to someone. You want to borrow gen, God will bl- bl- instruct somebody to buy it and give you. These are my contemplations. Please, I don't want you to take what I'm saying lightly. The secret to the power of God upon my life, aside from my love for Him, is my total surrender of my will and everything in my life. I have pleaded with God, crying in the secret place, that whatever is in my life that I cannot give God, I've begged Him to never give me. It is the favor I have pleaded with God to do for me. That Lord, if there is anything in my life that I will not be able to hand over to you, may it never come. That's the way of saving me. Finances, ministry, prestige, anointing, titles, reputation, influence. What is it that you cannot give God? It's the reason why the devil will destroy you. Brothers, you will hand over everything. There are many gentlemen now. There are predominantly young people here. And many brothers are out to take this year of triumph and make sure they are established. They want to force this door to open. No, you use keys. You don't use force. No, I must start ending. I'm not a small boy again. I'll be hearing this message. I must put it to work. You are about to put yourself in big trouble. I hand over my life to you. Jesus, if you don't help me, no one can help me. I will obey you and declare your lordship by allowing the word of God to dominate in me. If you have said that tithing brings favor, I will tithe and nothing will stop me. If praising you is the secret to breakthrough, I will praise you like a madman. That's his lordship over the life. Everything you believe the word of God can give you, have you applied it? Jesus is not Lord. I told you the, the, the dominion of the word in your life and the freedom with which you give the principles of the kingdom to find expression in you is the measure of the lordship of Christ in your life. I've come tonight to bring a very, very simple but profound secret to you. Koinonia, make Jesus Lord of your life experientially, not by talk. Hand over your house to him and see whether you will beg for food. Hand over your children to him and see whether he cannot pay their school fees. Hand over your education and see whether they will drive you out of the university because there's no school fees. He says, come unto me all ye that labor. Hand over your intention to build a house to him and watch somebody build a house and bring the, the, the key and give it to you. You have been trying to buy a car of 1.5 million. It's almost killing you. You raise 700,000, the devourer eats it. You raise 500,000, the devourer eats it. Why not go to God and say, Lord, there is a way this thing is done. I come to you. I come to you. Help me. And the Lord will tell you, A, B, C, D. And you want a car of 1 million, God will give you a car of 10 million. And people will look at you and say, you are a thief. No, you are not a thief. He is Lord of my life. When he's Lord of your life, he takes care of you. By God's grace, I have a few people that I take care of, like my children, and I am ever faithful to their lives. Their school fees, their well-being, it is my responsibility as a father figure over their life to take care of them. And I make sure, whether they deserve it or not, I give them. Not necessarily just because I love them alone. It's a show of responsibility. So when you hand over everything to God, he will pay your bills. You hand over everything to God, He will put laughter in your face. You hand over everything from, to God, He will shield you from recession. There are people already, this February, they have received rewards that even if they got by December, they will be happy. Already. Because they handed everything over to God. I've handed Koinonia and I do that to Him all the time. When I'm preparing for every service, I say, Lord Jesus, I am before you. I'm a small child before you. There are people listening, thousands of people waiting to be blessed all over the world. And Lord, I'm asking that you only use me. Speak to me. And I carry that sincere heart and come before him. And the results are remarkable. Results that not even me myself can account for. This is the key to ease in life. Surrender all. I surrender all to you. 
I surrender all. I surrender all. Hand over the ministry and rest. Hand over the business and rest. Hand over the children's school fees. Hand over your business and rest. With all Sing it one more time to him. Hand over the relationship and rest. Hand over the marriage and rest. Hand over the projects and rest. Hand over your desire for the anointing. Rest. 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 Will you give your life away? That's what he's asking you tonight, Koinonia. Will you give your life away? So your turn to respond to him now. Lord, I give myself away. Give myself away. Apostle, you don't understand. If I don't pay the rent by tomorrow, they are going to drive me. If God wakes that landlord from sleep, that's only when he can come to you. The landlord will sleep for eight hours. What guarantee does he have that he will wake up? Brothers and sisters, listen. I want you to trust God. The carnality has killed unbelief from believers. I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Whatever God cannot give me cannot be given by any man. No matter who deceives you. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. He said, but we will trust in the name of our God. Hallelujah. Get to a point of reckless abandon. You hand over everything and say, Lord, I'm tired of sleepless nights. You are not the first God has called into ministry. Lord, what if people don't come for this program? My reputation is at stake. Uh -uh, uh -uh. You are the one who called yourself. Lord, what if I don't make it? People would think I'm not successful. Yourself, your flesh, your ego is the very reason you will never step into it. I show you the mystery of ease. Submission to the Lordship of Christ. Jesus submitted himself, Philippians 2 5, obedient unto death. When there is nothing else to withhold from him, then he will give you everything. Everything. Kai. Everything. Everything. This God can surprise men. Have you not read it in your Bible? Listen, listen. You know, I have watched, and, and let me say this without humility. I have watched the way God is raising mighty people in this ministry. Especially in the area of finances. In the last three or four months, I have been shocked at how many millionaires God has produced in this ministry. Raising, I'm talking of ordinary people. Not just people who have any necessary acumen. Because he found men who can say, Lord, everything that you have, everything I have belongs to you. Trust me, let me be your treasurer. The last treasurer betrayed you. Let me be another one. Trust me. And God says, you are doing this for me? There are people entering unbelievable dimensions of the anointing. You know why? Because they have said, Lord, bless me. It's not about myself. It's for your glory. Bless me. I surrender my crowns. Men may clap for me, but I consciously take those crowns and drop them. Every time, especially after the miracle service, no matter how late, when I go home, after everyone has gone and left me alone, I never lie down and sleep. I have my little chair that is like my altar. I just kneel down and I say, I kneel to the doer of these wonders. 
people are in their houses discussing me and saying, my God, what a great man. And I kneel down. Sometimes people pile all kinds of seeds. There are all kinds of envelopes. And I just drop all of them on the ground. I said, Lord, this belongs to you. They gave the wrong person. But please make it right. Because I hand it over to you. It belongs to you. And God says, you do this for me. Ready for the next level. Some of us have stayed in one level of the anointing forever. You are anointed, but there is no growth. Because that is the level God has seen that he will be glorified. When he takes you to another level, you become Lord of yourself. We are going to pray. I told you it's a handover service tonight. Lay down your burdens. It's killing you. Lay down your burdens. It's killing you. What you are praying for, somebody got it today as a testimony. Why not you? Please listen to what I'm telling you. And you will watch God bless you. It's the antidote to recession. You will get up and move around. You are sleeping. God will wake somebody else and say, have you considered my servant promise? I want you not just to bless him one time, but so, so, so amount from your salary goes to him for as long as I bless you. And he's minding himself. This is the mystery some of us walk in. That people just look at our lives and say, how are these people doing it? It's the mystery of death to allow him be Lord. How many of us are willing to say, Lord, you have your way in my life? Rise up on your feet. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Oh, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Over my finances. Over my relationships. Over the ministry you have given. Over your education, over your children, over your marriage, over Kaduna State, over Nigeria. Have your way. Oh Lord. Have your way. Listen to me. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye. Who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Look up, we are going to pray some prayers, but so as to conserve time, I'm going to make an altar call while we pray. There are people here who are not even talking about lordship like surrender of everything. You need to make a genuine decision for Jesus. Inside, outside, you are listening to me. Online, you have never truly said, look, I'm, I'm tired of managing my life. I hand it over to Jesus. There are others, peradventure, at a point in your life you have handed over certain aspects of your life. But right now you are saying, Lord, I'm tired of one leg in, one leg out. I am determined to give you everything. As we begin to pray for every other person, those sets of people, inside and outside, clear the way for them. Please, I want you to rush and make your way to the front right here. I want to pray with you. Make sure you don't sit back because God is talking to you. The remaining people, lift your voice and begin to thank God. Everyone, lift your voice and begin to thank God. Those coming for the altar call, make your way quickly. Don't think about it. He's calling you. I show you the key to safety like the act of Noah. Lord, I am tired. Tonight, I'm ready to let go everything. Make your way to the front. Every other person, lift your voice and pray. Please, as you come and stand here, be praying too. Oh, Lord, have your way. Sing it one more time. Have your way, Lord.
pays to receive Jesus. It pays to be serious with Jesus. It's not about being a Christian. It pays. Jesus said this, I am the way. Not a way. I am the truth. Any other thing is a lie. You will see it with time. He says, and I am life. Brothers and sisters, listen. There are some of you standing here. This will be your first time. You have had preachers make altar calls. After altar calls. Some of you have even responded to other altar calls. But you have not been genuinely serious. And today you are saying, no, no, no. I can't play games again. There are others at one point in your life. You came out for an altar call. But you know your life has gone haywire. The Holy Spirit is still telling me there are still a few more people that are supposed to come and join these people in front. And he's speaking to them and they are sitting back. A handover ceremony to say, Lord, I'm tired. I can't keep pretending. Those of you in front, I want to lead you to make a serious decision for Jesus. Whether you are making it the first time or whatever it is, please make it genuine. Some of you are crying, it doesn't matter. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Lift your right hand high to the heavens and say this from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe that you are the Son of God. This night, I hand over my life, everything about it, unto you. I declare that you are my Savior. And I make you my Lord, the owner of my life, the master of my life, the leader of my life. Help me. Help that lady under the anointing. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I am a child of God. I declare that I'm tired of suffering. I hand over my life to you from today forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted father these ones have publicly come out they are not playing games with you they mean business with you and they are handing over their entire lives and destinies to you Lord I present these destinies before you you who is the master manager of any man's life I pray that you bring beauty and glory out of their lives. I pray in the name of Jesus that beauty will be replaced for ashes in their lives. In the name of Jesus. I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that you are empowered to reign. You are empowered to experience the reality of the life of God. From today, no going backwards. You move forward ever. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. Please, I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. You are going to have a few people right now. Praise the Lord. And just obey what they tell you to do. And they are going to have your details. We are going to get to you and follow you up more warmly. Please just follow them. Follow them. God bless you. Follow them. Everyone, we are going to pray. Please, we don't have time while they are going. Everyone, say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that wants to make me the Lord of my own life, the controller of my own life, the master over my life, I challenge you now in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The spirit of pride, the spirit of fear, make sure you are praying. Self-centeredness. Egocentric personality that makes you ashamed of handing it over to Jesus. Lord, I lay down my pride tonight. 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 Tired of mismanaging my life. Shake it 
Hallelujah. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, I hand over every pain, every disappointment, every burden, every concern that I've been unable to manage. I hand it over to you. Please help me do something about it. Lift your voice and pray. Oh yes. Call on to me and I will answer. Call on to me and I will answer. And I will show you. I will lift up my eyes to the hill. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. The maker of heaven. The maker of heaven and earth. Pray, Koinonia. in the name of Jesus I receive grace to be a word compliant Christian I receive grace for obedience total obedience total obedience I declare the dominion of the word of God over my decisions I declare the dominion of the word of God over my life, over my destiny. Open your mouth and receive that grace. No argument with the word of God. Final authority. Unquestionable authority. Final authority. Unquestionable authority. standing let me just tell you two benefits of the revelation of the lordship of christ number one confidence confidence when jesus is lord over your life the same confidence a jimmy's daughter has leaning on her father is the same confidence whenever you see any confident man in the kingdom he has given all that's why he's not afraid Many terrorists can blow themselves because they know the worst that can happen. And they have said, let the worst go places. What do you do with a man who is not afraid of dying? The last enemy to be destroyed. That man has conquered it. There's nothing you can do with him. Are we together? Confidence. This fear, this timidity can be solved when Jesus becomes Lord. Oh, I know my destiny is great. Not just because you have gone there. The Lord... When Archangel Michael came and they were fighting over the body of Moses in the book of Jude, Archangel Michael looked at um, 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 Lucifer and he said he would not charge a railing accusation, but he said, the Lord rebuke you. I invoke the authority that is higher than me to rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Confidence. You can turn and tell every mountain standing before you, the Lord rebuke you. You see? And then you have that confidence. Number two, 
it is the basis for true Bible faith. The Lordship of Jesus, the basis for true Bible faith. Taking action based on your conviction. The Lord said it. He said, go and tell them to lose the coat. And if they ask you, tell them the Lord, the master has need of it. The owner who created it. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness down. When Paul had an encounter, Saul, in the way of Damascus, he said, Lord, acknowledge his authority. There are some of you, when this becomes a revelation, brothers and sisters, you will see miracles upon miracles in your life. You will look and wonder and say, I did not feel anything. What happened? You subscribe to a revelation that produces wonders in your life. You lift up your voice to pray and God takes someone's prayer request and gives it to you as a gift. Before you lift your voice, it's like God owes you His presence. Because you have gotten to a point where everything belongs to Him. Kill greed from your life in the name of Jesus. Kill self-centeredness from your life. Kill this pressure of trying to protect your reputation. No, that's the way to death. Jesus, I have declared your word to your people. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Spirit of God will cause this word to truly minister in our hearts. That years after today, we will be able to look back and say, I handed everything over to him and that's the secret to my joy and peace. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus. And because you have done that, I prophesy over every challenge. Let me speak to the mountains over your life for one minute. I decree and declare that now that you have consciously handed everything over to God, I prophesy to every mountain that stands before you, in the name of the Lord whom you have made captain over your life, I command that mountain to become a level playing ground. Any kind of mountain regardless, Lord, let impossible situations be solved right now. In the name of Jesus. There are people, oh God, who need a miracle before tomorrow morning. I command that that miracle be established right now. Thank you very much for listening to this powerful sermon. We hope you were blessed. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to listen to Apostle Joshua Selman's messages, Apostle Arome Osai's messages, Archbishop Benson Dahosa, and Apostle Shubi Oluwatsubigola's sermon. Thank you very much. Enjoy. <laughs>